Hey everyone, today we are going to be talking about machine learning research and specifically machine learning research papers, which can actually be very important in a number of scenarios, specifically how to find interesting and related papers. To give you a few examples of where you might need this skill, well, for one, if you're in academia, when I was in academia, and we're working on research, one of the most important things was unsurprisingly finding other research to do research on, but finding other related research that uh, was interesting or related to my topic or that I could build off of. Even going to after that when I was working at companies like Google and Amazon and working on certain projects, well, you know, I want to make sure what I'm building is up to par and as close to state of the art as we can get. So even then I was looking up papers to figure out how I could do various things with NLP and other problems. And even now, even though I'm out of academia and I'm technically not working right now, I still use this skill to look up papers all the time, not just for this YouTube channel, but just out of personal curiosity and, you know, to keep up with what's going on in the field. So that's why today I do want to talk about looking up research papers and how to find interesting research papers. I think it's a very important skill as if you're into any sort of machine learning and even fields similar to it. That being said, I do a whole lot of videos like this, especially in the area of AI and machine learning. So if this is the type of thing that interests you, please do consider subscribing if you like this type of content. It does mean a lot. But with that out of the way, let's jump into the video and go onto my computer so I can show you a few of the websites I use to find research papers. So here we are now on my desktop and starting with number one of seven in no particular order, we're going with papers with code. And this website is really incredible. I said in no particular order, but this is probably one of my favorites. Essentially the idea here is that this is a collection of a bunch of papers with code. As you know, the name suggests, all of these have links to the paper and also links to the code. So if we were to click on this one, you can see we can quickly go to uh, the paper as well as a bunch of GitHub links. Uh, I guess that brings us to the same page, but it, not only do we have one link here, but we have several implementations. So you can see this is kept really up to date, which is very nice. And beyond just that, here's another thing I really love about this website is that if we go to browse state of the art, we have a bunch of tasks here. Let's go to a popular one like uh, machine translation. What we can actually do is see a bunch of different data sets on the left here. And then if we actually, we can see the best method for each of these, but even further, if we click on one of these, so for this data set, we can actually see a graph of all the methods that are recorded here in on the x-axis, you can see the time that they were published. And then you can also see the metric on the y-axis. So here we can see this is the best result, but there are a few others that are trailing close behind. I really love this pretty much just because the great presentation, it's always up to date and you have all these links to code and papers. I will say the one weakness of this site is that it doesn't have every paper out there, especially because you won't see on, at least on this browse, the state of the art stuff, right? You're not going to see things that don't look for, or that don't test benchmarks. So like theory papers, fundamentals, you might be able to find it in some of the other methods or something else. I haven't looked into this too much. The other thing is I wouldn't expect to find, you know, old papers on browsing state of the art. Most of these only go back so far and these are mostly just deep learning papers. That being said, there are, I'm sure there are some exceptions. I haven't go, gone over the whole site yet, but altogether, I really do love this site. Now on to number two. Number two is going to be social media in general for me. So right now you can see I'm on the machine learning subreddit, and this is probably one of my favorites. So Reddit overall is just a great site for this kind of thing. A few different subreddits I would like to point out are the machine learning subreddit, the learn machine, uh, sorry, the learn machine learning subreddit is really great if you're trying to learn stuff. Uh, another one is the reinforcement learning subreddit. There's a natural language processing subreddit. And I find some really cool stuff on all of these. I will say if you want papers specifically, the machine learning subreddit right here is going to be your best bet. They also do this really cool thing, uh, W-A-Y-R, what are you reading this week? And if we go in here, you can see that every week people will post what they're reading. And then a bot, I think it's a bot, will come through, get the ones that are the most updated and post them on the schedule. So you can go back and see what people were reading every week. And it's not even just the newest papers. You can also find some really cool old papers and articles and really everything in between. The other social media platform I'll mention really quick is Facebook. Facebook is also, okay, I prefer Reddit, but if you just go and search machine learning in the group section of Facebook, you will see quite a few groups for machine learning. I will warn you, some of these are a little bit garbage, um, but the ones that look through and filter the posts are pretty good. One, The one I look at most frequently is probably 
I don't see it right here, but it's like uh, deep learning and machine learning or, or something like that. Now to the third source, and this is probably the most well-known and the place you should really be going for the majority of what you're trying to get, and that is Google Scholar. Now, if you haven't heard of Google Scholar, you must live under a rock. Good morning. It's basically Google for research papers. And if you're looking for anything specific, this is the place to go. Recently, I did a video on inverse reinforcement learning. And the way I started looking into this was just going here and typing inverse. Oh, you can see. You can see I was typing algorithms for re inverse reinforcement learning. And here is the very specific paper for that. But if we just search inverse reinforcement learning, we can get a bunch of results. You can also do an advanced sort of search on the left here. You know, I, I really don't have too much more to say about this. It's just straightforward. It's one of the best sites for looking up research paper because it pulls together research from so many sources. Any other sources of research I mentioned during this video, you can probably also find through Google Scholar. That's it for that because I, it's, I think it's pretty self-explanatory. The next method I'm going to mention actually flows in really well with Google Scholar, and that is looking through, and this is the, the oldest way to do it, oldest way in the book, is looking through other citations. So if we go into this algorithm for inverse reinforcement learning, or let's do an actually a, a little bit of a newer paper. Uh, oh gosh, since 2017, here's one in adversarial. So it takes us to the archive page. Now, if we go to the PDF, and we go down here, we can see the citations. Now, this is probably something you already know. Each paper has so many citations, and this is very helpful, not just to see if people are doing things properly, but to see other papers that might help inform you. What I would generally recommend doing is reading over the related work section in papers, and that will help you narrow down generally if you're trying to look at a specific topic. For example, the research I'm doing on my channel, by the way, plug for that, it's a pretty cool series. But the research I'm doing on my channel, I was trying to figure out, well, how do we go from text to goal? And I didn't know that inverse reinforcement learning might be a way to do that. I was looking up general things and reading all these related work sections and finding things that seem similar. And eventually I came across these papers by looking at all these citations. And the other thing I wanna mention about Google Scholar is that you can find papers that cite a specific paper, which is incredibly helpful. So you can see this paper right here is cited by 286 other papers. So if we click on this, we can actually find all the papers that have cited it. So these could build on the work or be referencing it in like an overview. So this is, probably the best way to find related research if you're doing actual research and you need to look up on a subject, definitely you should be doing this. If you don't, I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> the next method I wanna go over is getting research directly from companies and academia that post papers to their public sites. So an example of that would be DeepMind. DeepMind is a company that you probably know about if you're an email that does lots of great research. And you might already know about this website where they post all of their research. This is maybe not if you're looking for a specific subject, but if you're just looking to keep up with the field, see what's going on, they have a lot of cool stuff here. And if you're trying to get into the company, I'm sure it wouldn't hurt to know a lot about a lot of their papers. Now, this is one, two others I like to use, OpenAI. This is a little bit less frequent, but there's some good stuff here. You probably have already heard of this one too. Uh, one, another one is the MIT News for research. They have a lot of cool research here. Lots of AI machine learning. There is also some, lots of non-machine learning stuff, but it's, it's all interesting, I think. So this is another great way to find interesting papers. Next on to the sixth method, and the sixth method here is looking through conference proceedings. Now, even if you can't go to conferences yourself, you of course still have access to all the papers that are published there. So right here, I have the NeurIPS 2020 conference proceedings where it essentially lists all the papers. And there are a lot. There is absolutely no way to look through all of these, not gonna lie. But what you can do is you can just kind of control F and I, I have no clue if there's anything on inverse reinforcement learning, but look at that, inverse reinforcement learning from a gradient-based learner. So I've already found something that's interesting, interesting to me if I'm looking into inverse reinforcement learning. And there's really a lot of great papers here. I wouldn't recommend going one by one though, because there are just way too many. Another example would be the ICML conference proceedings right here we can look up, you can filter by titles and authors. So again, if I do like inverse reinforcement learning, here's a paper, pretty cool. Now, just a, a little disclaimer, you can also find these through something like Google Scholar and the search is gonna be a bit more robust, but just in case you wanted to see what came out right as soon as a conference was, or one of these proceedings was published, 
you know, go for it. The next and the last method of finding papers is something you are probably all familiar with, and that is archive. Archive is essentially a database of papers, especially there are a lot of preprint papers, which is nice if you want to see papers before they get published. You can just come in here. I have put this on computer science and we can search for something like Burt's, I don't know, and I'm sure all sorts of examples or papers will come up here. Now, I honestly wouldn't recommend using the archive search when you can just use Google Scholar, but uh, you know, I, I would be remiss if I didn't mention it. But either way, that wraps up the seven different methods I wanted to share with you guys as to how you can find interesting research. Whether you're working on research in academia or working on projects at a company, or you just wanna keep up with the field and see what's going on, these are all great ways to keep up with it. I do a lot of content like this on this channel. So if you do wanna see more of this content, do consider hitting the subscribe button and liking the video if you thought this was helpful. But either way, thank you so much for watching the video and I hope to catch you next time.